We'll give everybody a couple more seconds to log on and get started. Thank you all for tuning in again. Um, I know today was a beautiful day and a lot of people, including myself, spent some time outside enjoying the weather here in Northeastern Ohio. Um, appreciate you for tuning in. Feel free to start a watch party. You can share this, tag your friends in it. Um, see as many people as we can get. If you're watching tonight, comment. Let my wife know behind the camera that you're watching. Give her a wave. Let us know where you're watching from. This week, um, we did some targeted Facebook advertising with Facebook. Um, I set up some advertising that would reach out to people only in the warm vicinity of where the church is located. We took a couple mile radius outside of the church and we targeted our advertising towards the church page to them. Anybody that had not already liked the church page or ever commented on the page, and we reached a well over 2,000 people. It's actually closer to 3,000. Got a lot of new likes. I believe some of you are probably watching this evening. I want to thank you for tuning in. Um, make yourself comfortable. We are going to have a little bit of a devotional time. We're going to have some worship this evening. Um, I do have my sons, Mikey and Ryan. We're going to sing another song for you and get into the word of the Lord. I want to give everybody some encouragement. Um, just like today, I believe everybody's spirit is up basically because of the weather. But I want everybody to know things are going fantastically, not only at the church, but just in life in general. The light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter. We're starting to see the end of this whole pandemic quarantine type of thing the news reports that are coming out are great be encouraged don't consume fear don't allow fear to dictate your life be encouraged have faith give god all the glory because we're going to be together again real soon but we're going to sing a song for you this evening I have my son ryan stand up um, we've been practicing this song for a while it's a newer song for us but many of you will probably know it sing along with us if you know it um, we've spent some time on it Mikey is really good on the keys, and uh, that's good for us. makes us sound good. Um, but when we're done, give both my sons a big hand clap for the work that they're doing. We've got Ashley back here again doing sign language. Give her a thumbs up or a wave. Um, we're trying to reach, and we're just trying to connect and trying to help encourage as many people as we can. So just be a part of what we're doing. We'll get through this this evening, and you can still have the rest of your beautiful evening get done but we're going to sing this song called 10,000 reasons Ten thousand reasons for my heart. 
greatly to be praised. We do it every week. We're going to do it again. They're sneaking underneath the camera. I hope you can see their backs as they're trying to sneak out of the studio. But give both my sons, Mikey and Ryan, a little round of applause. They do a great job helping make their old dad look good. And I appreciate them. Um, it makes me feel good to know that I have kids that want to serve the Lord. I don't know if you guys know this, but every Sunday night at six o'clock before we go on the air, while I'm down here studying, my son, Mikey is our youth pastor and he runs a Zoom meeting with his youth group for about 40 minutes from 6 to 6.40 before he does this. So Sunday's an all-day event for us, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm just thankful to have a family that desires to serve the Lord. Um, it's a blessing to me to have God's favor in my life, and I appreciate it. Um, I do want to speak to you tonight. I've got a thought that I want to talk to you about. I don't want to be very long-winded about it, but I do want to make a point because I believe that God has been moving in these devotionals. I've received a lot of texts, a lot of private messages of people that have been tuning in and people that have been blessed. Got a testimonial last week of a man that I've known for a long time that watched our devotional. He watched it late in the evening after, it was, after his wife had actually gone to bed and said he got such a presence of the Lord around him, he began to speak in tongues. His wife came out of the bedroom after falling asleep and found him just worshiping the Lord. That's what this is about. I want everybody to feel the presence of the Lord through this, and I believe God wants to speak tonight in what we're doing. Um, part of what I want to talk about, I'll let you know where it comes from. This week, um, I heard the word reopening of the economy, and I got very excited about it. I'm very, very excited about the path that we're on in Ohio. I um, am 100% behind getting things back to as much of normal as quickly as possible. Um, I support our governor. I think that um, in the long run, we're going to be a lot better off than a lot of places. But the, just the, the word reopening gets me excited. Uh, May 1st, I did put out a Facebook Live video in my car, just how excited I was. I'm anxious to get back to doing things. I'm anxious to getting back to church and being able to see everybody. Uh, we probably aren't going to be able to do my favorite things for a while in um, adhering to the guidelines that are being set forth in terms of social distancing. But just the idea of reopening got me excited, and I began to get a thought from the Lord, um, spent a little time in prayer and talking to God about just the aspect of opening. And I have a thought for you tonight, and I want to talk to you about, and I'll put a title on this for those of you that are following along, called The Opening of the Door. The Opening of the of the door. There was a time in Jesus's ministry, Jesus was walking with his disciples and he was talking to them at one point in the book of John about chapter 10. He was talking to them saying, I am the good shepherd. I am this and I am that. He was basically trying to explain to his disciples just who he was. 
And in verse 9 of John chapter 10, Jesus says something that is very profound. He says, Behold, I am the door. Jesus says those words, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He tells his disciples, he says, I am the door. He's been talking about a sheepfold with them and being a shepherd and how the sheep know his voice and a stranger they won't follow. And he's talking about keeping them in a fold and in an in a, in a, in a, a, a area of containment. And Jesus says that to get into that sheepfold, behold, I am the door. That, that positive confirmation, I am the door, and by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of a door, I think of it in two terms, two ways. One, a door can keep you in. You can be on the inside of a house, and the door is a closure that keeps you in. It's also a way that you can get out. A door goes two ways, but Jesus tells his disciples, he says, I am the door. And then later he's talking in Matthew chapter 16, and this I want to read to you. I want to read these verses of scripture to you word for word. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me. I'm going to go quickly. But Matthew chapter 16, Jesus again is talking to his disciples, and then we're going to start at verse 13 and read down through verse 20. Jesus says this. It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus asked his disciples, Who are people saying that I am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some say thou art Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, Jesus, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Who do you, my disciples, you've spent some time with me. You've been following me and traveling with me in my earthly ministry. You've seen some of the works I've done. You've seen some of the miracles and some of the things that we've gone through. You've heard some of my teaching. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter, in verse 16, answers and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. A very profound statement. Peter stands up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answers and says unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is Jesus talking. And I will give unto thee, speaking to Peter, Jesus says, I will give unto you, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 20 says, Then charged he, Jesus, his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. There's a lot in these scriptures, and I want to move quickly, but I want to get to a point. Peter stands up and says something profound in verse 16. Jesus asks his disciples, he says, who do you say that I am? And his disciples are saying, well, some say you're Jeremiah or that you're John the Baptist or you're Elijah or you're one of the prophets. And Jesus says, well, who do you think I am? And Peter stands up boldly and proclaims, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, the Christ, the Holy One, the Holy One of God. You are the Christ. Jesus says, blessed are you, Peter, because it's not flesh and blood. It wasn't your own human intellect that showed you this, but it was revelation. It was revealed to you from my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you now that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now a lot of people, even good, good moral Bible people, get this scripture in verse 18 mixed up. Because the name Peter or Cephas means a small stone. That's what the name means. It means a small stone, a rock, a stone. And a lot of people think what Jesus is saying is that he's going to build his church upon Peter. But if you take the translation of this scripture in its original text, the word Peter and the word rock that Jesus uses are two separate words. Jesus is not saying that he's going to build his church upon Peter. What Jesus is saying is he's going to build his church upon the revelation of Peter that Peter realized that Jesus was God. 
Jesus is God. He is the Christ. And it was revealed unto him from God. And he says, upon that rock, the rock that Jesus is God, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And because of the revelation that Peter had, Jesus says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven so that whatsoever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. He gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Peter had the keys to the kingdom of heaven because of the revelation that he had received that Jesus was the Christ. But what's interesting about that scripture is as soon as he does that, he says, don't tell any man that I am the Christ. He gives Peter the keys to the kingdom. Now remember, Jesus is the door to heaven. He's the door to the kingdom. And now Peter has the keys to the kingdom. But he's been told, and the other disciples were told, tell no man. Could you imagine that responsibility that you know that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven? Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter had the keys to the kingdom because it was revealed unto him that Jesus was the Christ. Where do we find out that Peter used the keys? I'm going to tell you. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2 in the Acts of the Apostles. Now remember, Jesus is the door. We're talking about the opening of the door. Jesus said, I am the door. And now he's given Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Keys unlock doors. That's what they do. Keys unlock and lock doors. Jesus is the door to heaven, and Peter now has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And in Acts chapter 2, after Peter stands up with the eleven, and he gives, the, he gives a, a sermon about uh, what's going on because they've received the Holy Ghost in the upper room and they've stumbled out into the streets of Jerusalem and the people there have heard them speak in tongues and uh, magnify God in their own native tongues and they say, what meaneth this? And Peter talks to them for a while. And I want to pick up in verse 36 because remember, Peter's given the keys to the kingdom because of his revelation of Jesus being the Christ. But him and the other disciples that were with Jesus that day are told immediately after to tell no man that Jesus is the Christ. Now in Acts chapter 2, we find after this is after Jesus' crucifixion, this is after Jesus' resurrection, and Jesus has already gone back into heaven. He's been gone, and he told them to go to Jerusalem and, and tarry there until they are dued with power from on high. This is after that. They've received the Holy Ghost. Peter begins to speak to these men, and in verse 36, I want you to see what he says. At the end of his sermon, or whatever you would call it, on the day of Pentecost, Peter says this, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. I want all of you Jews to know with 100% assurance that God hath made this same Jesus whom you have crucified. This same Jesus that you just a few weeks ago took out and hung on a tree. This same Jesus that you have crucified hath been made both Lord and and Christ. Peter just told them all the revelation of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said that because of this revelation, I'm going to build a church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am the door, and Peter, thou hast the keys to the kingdom. In this scripture and in this chapter of the book of Acts, what Peter has just done is he has unlocked the door to heaven. He has told the house of Israel that Jesus, this same Jesus that you crucified, is both Lord and Christ. The next verse says that when they heard this, these men heard this, they were immediately pricked in their hearts, and the first thing that I ever taught in one of these devotionals, they asked Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter tells them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The door to salvation was open because Peter used the keys to the kingdom to reveal just who Jesus was. 
He unlocked the door to salvation by opening the door to Jesus. Now I want to talk to you. God has ordained men to open the door. Someone may ask right now, you may be asking, if Jesus is the door, why didn't he just open himself? The Bible says that God has ordained this gospel into the hands of men, and it pleases God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I want to talk to you now personally about the opening of the door. I want to get right next to where you are because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt in the past few weeks, however many of these weeks that we've been doing these devotionals and that we've really put an emphasis on the church sermons of Pastor Brown and the other ministers and you've been watching, I know you have, you've been commenting, you've been getting involved, you've been getting connected and I know that you believe what it is that we're teaching or else you would not be tuning in. I don't have to preach that hard of a message to get you to believe that Jesus is God and that you want to go to heaven. I don't have to do it. You're tuning in because I know that that's how you feel. I know that during this quarantine and during this time of a pandemic, you've had time where God has spoken to you. God has moved in your life. God has begun to minister through these videos and just through his spirit to you. And I know that you feel it. I know that you're encouraged by it. I know that you're inquisitive about it. You want to know more. That's why you continue to turn in. But I want to talk to you tonight about something because the book of Revelation, and I'm not going to go way out into prophecy. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about end time prophecy. But in the third chapter of the book of Revelations, I believe it's around verse 19 or verse 20. Jesus speaking again, red letters, says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Well, Mike, I just thought you told us that Peter opened the door to heaven. The door to heaven is open tonight. There's no question about it. Peter never shut the door, and G Peter was given the keys to the kingdom wherever what he did on earth would be done in heaven. Whether he bound something or loose something on earth, it would be done in heaven. When Peter unlocked the door, Jesus leaves the door open. He is himself. He is the door. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The door to heaven has never been closed, and I'm here to tell you with 100% assurity that the door to heaven is open this evening. So in Revelations, what door is Jesus talking about when he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock? I know you feel it right now. He's talking about the door to your heart. He's talking about the door to you. Not talking about the door to the church as a whole. Not talking about the door to the world as a whole. He's talking directly to you. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open unto me, I will come in I'll sup with him, I'll eat with him, I'll fellowship with him, I'll have a relationship with him. But I want to expose something to you this evening. You can Google this when we're done. There's a picture that I'm sure many of you, some of you probably have it in your home, but I'm sure many of you have seen it either in a funeral home or a church or maybe one of your grandparents' home or your parents' home. There's a very, very, very famous picture of Jesus standing outside the door of a home knocking. Matter of fact, if you Google the words Jesus knocking at the door picture, I could almost guarantee it without having my iPad here that it would pop up and you could see what I'm going to tell you. If you examine that picture very closely, if you look at that picture and examine it very closely, there's quite a diff couple different versions of it, but they're all basically the same. It's Jesus in the evening time outside of a door, standing there knocking. I want you to examine that door. Because if you look at that door, 
there's no doorknob or there's no handle on the outside of the door. The only way for that door to be opened is from the inside. Jesus Christ, my friends, is a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force himself upon anybody. But oh, if you could understand that he's outside the door of your heart right now knocking. I use an illustration sometimes and I want to tell you about it and then I'm going to get ready to close and we're going to pray and I hope God ministers to you. Where I live, I have a big picture window in my front living room. I like it. It lets me see to the outside. I like natural light. But let me, let me, let me explain what I'm trying to say. And I'll use, I'll use my mother-in-law to make it a good example. If I'm looking out the front window and I'm sitting in the living room and my wife and I are watching TV and my mother-in-law stops by unannounced and begins to walk up the front walk to the steps and we see her through that picture window and she sees us and begins to knock on the door or ring the doorbell to try to get our attention. And she saw us. She saw us in the living room and we saw her and she knocks and nobody answers, she would think, oh, maybe I need to knock a little bit louder. Maybe the dog's making noise. Maybe the TV's up too loud. She would knock, knock, and knock a couple times. And if there was no answer at the door, she may even convince herself, you know, maybe I, maybe I thought I saw something I didn't see. Maybe they're not home. And she may go home. If she came back and did that again next week, the next day, a few days later, and she could swear that she saw us in the house. She knows she saw us. And she begins to knock. But there's no answer. Maybe even the second time. I'd go maybe the third time. Maybe the fourth time. She would try to convince herself in her mind that something's, something's amiss. Something's going on where we're not home. It just looks like that. Maybe it's a shadow that's cast through the window. But eventually... The realization that my mother-in-law would come to is they don't want to see me. For whatever reasons, they saw me coming up the walk. I saw them, but after knocking and after ringing and after calling their names, there's been no answer at the door. They don't want to open the door because they don't want to see me. Friend, I'm talking to you this evening. I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm not trying to, to come down on you and ball you out. But man, I wish you could feel the Spirit of the Lord the way I do. And I believe He's talking right now. God's been knocking at your heart for a long time. Even before all this happened, God's been dealing with you. I don't have to preach a whole message to convince you. You know right where you sit right now watching this video that what I'm telling you is the truth. The door to your heart can only be opened by you. Jesus himself said, if any man will open that door, and that goes for women, that goes for boys and girls, that goes for all ages, all genders, all nationalities, all ethnicities, all walks of life. If you would open the door, he'd come in and sup with you. Isn't that what you really want anyway? Isn't that what you truly desire anyway? Is a real relationship with God. You can have it this evening. You can have it where you sit right now. Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Spirit of the Lord is dealing with you. And you can feel it. When I knock on this table, I know it's speaking to you because God is knocking at your heart. Will you open the door? Let me tell you something. When you do, God will come in. He desires a relationship with you. That's why he allowed Peter to open the keys to heaven so that 
all of us could go be with him. His word says he's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come unto repentance. I believe God loves you. I'm going to give you an opportunity. What we're going to do is we're going to pray right now because I know God's knocking. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for God's spirit to come to right where you are and to give you the strength and the ability to open that door from the inside of your heart and let him in and begin a relationship with him tonight. Let's go to him in prayer. When we're done, I want to thank you once again for tuning in. We'll end this right now and you can get on to the rest of your Sunday night. But the opening of the door requires you to open your heart. Let's go to God in prayer right now. Dear Jesus, Lord, as we come unto you this evening, God, we thank you once again for saturating this place, Lord, and all of the homes with your unwavering spirit. God, we thank you, Lord, that your heart is toward us and that you desire to have a relationship with your creation. We're thankful for that, God. We're thankful for the relationship that we have for you. God, we're thankful tonight because we know that where we are, your spirit is dealing with the hearts of men and women, Lord. You are standing at the door of their hearts this evening knocking, just standing and knocking, wanting to come in, wanting to fellowship, wanting to sup with them, wanting to have a relationship with them, just desiring that they would open their hearts to you. God, I ask you to saturate their homes where they are, where these videos are being watched, and give them the strength, the ability, the desire, Lord, to open their hearts to you, knowing that you have nothing but good for them. God, you've been good to us, and we thank you for your many blessings. God, we thank you for your drawing power. God, we thank you for your spirit that we know is moving in the hearts and souls of men and women right now. God, we ask you to continue your work, Lord. Minister to everyone that is watching this evening and give them a desire to begin a relationship with you that can go all the way to the end when they can walk through that door to heaven. God, thank you this evening once again for this opportunity. Bless everyone that is watching this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Know this. You are always, always, always invited, wanted, and welcome at the Apostolic Pentecostal Church of Warren at 3101 DeForest Road. God bless you. Have a good evening.